Hey, what's up guys? Hopefully we are live right now. My wife is telling me we are. So that must mean, yeah, that means we're live. Okay. Eileen RVA, hey, how's it going? Good to see you in the chat. Happy Cinco de Mayo. Um, we're going to be doing some delicious stuff today. We are actually going to be making a margarita first, a mezcal margarita, and then we're going to make some guacamole and some homemade uh, fried tortilla chips. So a few things to go through. Shouldn't take too much time, but thanks for hanging out. Uh, first, let's do a uh, margarita, shall we? I'm going to get some ice. You stay right there, camera woman. Get some ice and... Uh, I'll show you how it's done. You can see I have uh, some mezcal right here. This is uh, a really, actually a pretty nice one. Probably shouldn't be making margaritas with it, but that's what I have, so that's what we're gonna make, or use to make a margarita with. I have some um, orange liqueur Patron. This is just Patron's version of Cointreau. And then I have some uh, amber agave syrup a lime and some ice, a little salt to rim the glass with. So uh, let's do that first. We'll go into some of the measurements. This is how I make it. I'm sure there's a million ways to make a margarita. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just rim the glass with a little lime juice and then give it a little tap in the salt. See that right there? Ooh. This is what happens when you have pets. There you go. Now I'm going to drop an ice cube in there. And the measurements that I am uh, I'm using here today are for a shorter glass like this. Got nine in the, in the chat room now. What's going on, whoever you are? Thanks for joining. So I'm going to do an ounce and a half of mezcal. Okay, just like that. I like mezcal because it's got this nice smoky flavor, and that, that kind of happens when they, um, they cook the piña, the, 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 the hearts of the agave, um, in pits, kind of like you'd make barbacoa, and they get this, it gets this nice smoky flavor, and I really like that in a margarita. And then we're gonna do just a little, little bit, I'd say a little less than a half ounce of this orange liqueur, like that. Okay. And uh, if you really, Looking to not spend money on something like that, you could use triple sec if you're, you know, you have a tequila that's not, uh, you know, super nice, and you're like, well, I don't think I need Cointreau or something like this. Then just go with triple sec. It'll it'll do in a pinch. Now we got the juice of a whole lime. Okay, that's about an ounce, I'd say. There we go. Last but not least, a little agave. That's about a tablespoon, just like that. And then I'm gonna give it a good shake. All right. And there is a Cinco de Mayo margarita. Perfect, there we go. Now that we have the cocktail out of the way, and by, um, by chance, if you're under 21 watching this, this is not for you, okay? Little disclaimer there. So good, mm, so good. Been thinking about that for a while. Hello, hello, how's it going? Okay, let's get into a little guacamole, huh? Shall we? I've got some ingredients over here. Got a lime. Come on over here. <laughs> Come over to here. We have some finely diced jalapeno. We have some red pepper. I mean, red red onion. Sorry. Uh, some garlic. A little fresh cilantro. Some sea salt and some avocado. Oh, yeah. There. Uh, and then we also have cumin and some coriander. This is a little bit unorthodox for, for guac, but that's just how I make it. So I'll, uh, I'll show you how I do all this right now. 
we need a bowl like this. Cut your lime in half. First thing I do is I add the lime juice to the bowl. What's that? Janet. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah? Nice. I don't see her, her popping in the chat. OK, yeah, so we get the lime juice here. This is, uh, again, about an ounce, so two tablespoons or 28 grams if you're weighing it. Um, I get the lime juice in the bowl because when I add the avocado, I get everything in the bowl first, and then I add the avocados last because I don't want the avocados hanging out, oxidizing, getting brown while I'm prepping all my other ingredients. So the lime juice keeps them from oxidizing, keeps them nice and green. That's exactly why I do that first. Now I have my diced jalapeno, okay? That's about a quarter cup or an ounce. And that goes in. We also have about a uh, half ounce or two tablespoons of the diced red onion, okay? I'm gonna add some coriander, some ground coriander. It's about an eighth of a teaspoon, not much, just a little bit. And I really like, I really like how the dried spice kind of comes through with fresh ingredients. It's just a nice balance, um, especially the cumin. I gotta say the cumin really is important for me. And you won't see, I don't think you'll see much or many guacamole dishes have cumin in them, but mine does, and I just love the way it tastes. For those uh, Richmond folks that frequented Seca Wine Bar when I was a chef there years ago, uh, this is pretty much the exact recipe that we use there minus, uh, or with the addition of jalapeno. No, we didn't put jalapeno in the guac that we used at, at Seco. But pretty much the same recipe aside from that. So I've got all this delicious stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and add my sea salt too, about a half teaspoon, all right? Yeah, and you can adjust the seasoning later on once you mix everything together. But a half teaspoon is a good place to start. And then we're gonna take this raw garlic clove, okay? And we're gonna grate it with a microplane. So basically you're turning it into mush, you're turning it into a paste. And that's gonna go in. Just like that, okay? We have just about everything in. We need our cilantro and we need our, uh, our avocado. But other than that, all the other ingredients are in there. I don't put tomato in my guacamole. I don't know, I just don't like it in guac. I'll eat it, but I don't put it in mine. So let's chop up some cilantro. This is, uh, what do I got here? About a third of an ounce. I'd say it's, a, it's about a third cup lightly packed, okay? And we're just gonna chop this up. Give it a fine chop. Someone just tried chipotle chili in theirs. Chipotle sounds good. Like a okay, gotcha. Interesting. I haven't tried that. I do like the smokiness of a chipotle. Matter of fact, since you're bringing up chipotle, I have these brown chipotles that I use in my adobo sauce. Ah. Oh. Smells so good. They have this light, smoky aroma to them. Ah, oh, fantastic. So uh, yeah, I, I like Chipotle too. Haven't tried it in guac though. Uh, might have to give that a try. Anyways, we're gonna give this a fine chop, okay? Try not to bruise the herbs, use a nice sharp knife. Just like I'm doing here. See how it's not bruised, it's nicely cut, all right? Nice sharp knife will do that. Dull knife will just, you'll just beat it up. Okay. There. Now, what's left are avocados. And I've cut a few of these up already, just because I wanted to get a head start. But I have one that, I've, that I haven't cut. I don't know if you want to try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> but this is how I cut an, cut an avocado. This is kind of how we do it in restaurants. Um, you just run your knife around the outside of the avocado, twist, pull, and then to get the seed out here, 
Just do that. Piece of cake, right? And I hold the avocado and cut it like this, but I can see folks at home getting nervous, so maybe just put it on the counter and do it. But I typically just make little slices into the avocado without cutting through the skin on the other side, or else I'd be bleeding right now. Okay, just like this. Just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna scoop it right out, right into the bowl. Just like this. Beautiful. I got two more to do. Like this. And avocados that you want to use, I would say a semi-ripe avocado is best. I don't like the ones that are super soft because I like my, my guac chunky. I like a little texture in there. And ones that are super soft will just turn into mush. So I like a, kind of a hybrid, a little bit of both, but definitely a little bit of texture in my guacamole. So yeah, scrape it all out. What we got here? Guac, nice. Global Food Book, hello. Glad to join, hey, welcome. Thanks for joining, I appreciate it. Let's see. And some folks even add the pit back in. And they, there's, I don't know how true it is. I don't think it really is. I don't think there's any science behind it, but some folks say that that actually keeps the avocado uh, green longer. Somehow I doubt it, but superstitiously, I'd put it in there anyways. Just one. And if you hear somebody crying in the background, an animal, that's our old cat. Maybe my son, Alton, would tend to Lara so that she isn't meowing. Thank you. Okay, so we have everything we need for our guac in the bowl. I'm gonna mix it up until some of this becomes softer and some of it stays, you know, sort of intact. Yeah, so what do you guys think about this? Does this look pretty good so far? Yeah, a lot of garlic. I mean, the raw garlic is very prevalent in it. Um, you don't need much, just one clove for this batch. And I'd say that this amount right here is easily good for anywhere from four to six people to snack on, easily. So you see how there's some, there's some texture here still, but we're getting some soft, you know, some, some, some mushed avocado too, I guess. <laughs> some, it's not really pureed, but... Um, yeah, so I kind of like my avocado like this. Very chunky. Yeah. What do you think? Let's give it a taste. Hmm. Just the way I like it. So good. All right. We have our guac. You can transfer it to a container, like a, like a quart deli or something, and put the lid on it, throw it in the fridge, let it hang out for a little bit. If you're gonna hold on to it for a day or two, you can always float some extra virgin olive oil on top of your guac in the container with the lid on. That'll keep the top from oxidizing and it'll keep everything underneath the oil nice and green. So um, just a little tip there, if you plan on holding on to it for a while, that's what you should do. But we're gonna, we're gonna crush this tonight, so I'm not gonna bother. Moving on over to the tortillas. I have some oil in a pot here. This is kind of a shallow fry, I should say. Um, it's about a quart and a half. Like, I don't know the size of this pot though. I'm not sure. And my oil, which I'm temping out right now, should be right around 350. Yes. We're at, yeah, we're right at th just about 350, 357. So that's good. I'm gonna bump the heat up a little bit because when I drop the cold tortillas in here, it's gonna drop the heat of the oil and I don't want that to happen too much. What I'm doing is I'm cooking fresh 
corn tortillas, these yellow corn tortillas here. So what I've essentially done is just bought a package from the store and I cut them into six pieces, each tortilla. Let me show you while the heat of the oil is kind of coming up here. I'm just taking a pile of tortillas, cutting them in half once, and just putting them on top of each other here. Can you bake them? You know, I've never tried, but I'm sure you can. Uh, if you don't like the deep frying option, uh, give it a try. Spread them out on a sheet pan though, so they're not kind of layered over each other if you try to bake them. And uh, so they're kind of all on a single layer and throw them in like a, maybe a 325 degree oven, I'm guessing. But I've never tried it personally, so I don't have any hard and fast rules for that. Some folks like to let the tortillas sit out overnight and let them dry out a little bit. I've never had an issue getting a nice crispy tortilla chip um, straight out of the bag. So you can do that if you want to, but I usually just go to the store, buy a bag, come home, cut them up, drop them in the oil and they come out great. So you don't want to overcrowd your pan, okay? And you can shallow fry if you want to. You can use about half the amount of oil um, and do some shallow frying if you don't want to buy a quart and a half of oil and just kind of wonder what the heck you're going to do with it, where you're going to store it afterwards. But um, I'm, I, I like about this amount when I'm doing tortilla chips. And I'm just going to drop in a dozen or so maybe a few more, and see how they're sizzling. That's the moisture in the, the tortilla just evaporating while it's frying. So keep an eye on the chips like this. Give them a little stir. Make sure they're not sticking to each other at all. Yeah, that's good. Okay. We're gonna let them fry for a couple of minutes and I'm gonna stir them occasionally and try to kind of turn them over with my, um, my little spider here, okay? But once they turn a, uh, like a, a, a kind of a golden brown color and that, that sizzle stops, that means they're done. All right, I usually let them go for like an additional 10 seconds and then I pull them. So we're just gonna hang out and we're gonna watch these guys fry up. I, I do, okay. Let's see what we got here. Janet, uh, can you make the chips from fresh corn tortillas that you made with your carnitas? Yeah, I could, yeah. Uh, would you need to dry them a little uh, after cooking them? You know, that's a great question. Because the store-bought tortillas are a little drier, I'm going to say yes, you should let them dry out a little bit. Um, and try to give them the same texture or the same hydration that you might find in a store-bought store tortilla. Um, but that's an excellent question. You can certainly make the, the the, um, the tortillas at home, just make sure, yeah, they're a little, little more dried out than straight off the griddle, okay? So come on over here, guys. Can you see um, how there's the sizzle, that all that water that's evaporated? It's, it's virtually gone. There's no moisture left in the chips. That's a good sign. That means we're pretty much there. And they're starting to get golden brown. I'm gonna kick the heat up a teeny bit because I think it dropped. Starting to get golden brown there. They're just about done. I'm gonna give them another 10 seconds. And then we're gonna come over to this half sheet pan that I have over here that's uh, got some pa pipe, uh, paper towels lined uh, on it. That's gonna soak up any uh, residual grease. All right, here we go. Just try to get as much grease off them as you can before you pull them, okay? So you gotta work in batches. Um, you know, that's just part of the game here. Maybe give the oil a second to um, come up a few degrees. Yeah, I cranked the heat already, so I think we're good. And we're gonna put a few more in. And we'll just keep working in batches. AJ. Thank you. She probably wants to go to the bedroom, dude. So yeah, so just keep frying them, work in batches. When they come out of the oil, they go on to this pa uh, paper towels here just to soak up any excess grease. Um, and then when you have them all fried, you obviously want to season them, and we'll do that in a second. We don't need to do all of these chips. I'll finish those off in a little bit. But we'll do this next batch. We'll get them over here with the other ones that just came out, and then we'll season them. And uh, we'll have our chips and guac 
pretty much ready to go. Can I have it after? <laughs> yes. Thank you. My son's asking if he can have the guacamole and the chips after we're done here. Absolutely. Yeah, those look pretty good, man. They're frying up nice. Rizzy, how's it going? Happy Cinco de Mayo, man. If anybody's got any questions, you're more than welcome to fire them off in the chat. I am here. I'll answer them. Uh, just keep them food-centric, nothing political, nothing about corona, please. <laughs> It's time for another sip. Is anybody celebrating the holiday? Anybody doing anything special for a Cinco de Mayo? You got, what are you guys cooking tonight? What's on the menu? Yeah, I think we're pretty close here. Maybe another 10 seconds. Uh, as far as oils go, I didn't bring this up earlier, but I think um, uh, any high smoke point oil, like a neutral flavored oil, will do great. I'm using corn oil because we're cooking corn tortillas, so I figured, you know, why the heck not? A lot of times I'll use peanut oil um, for, for a lot of my deep frying. And uh, in a pinch, you know, canola, grapeseed, uh, even a vegetable oil that has a high smoke point will, will suffice. All right, these are coming out. And I'm just tilting the spider here just to let any excess oil drip off the chips. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, three more. And I'm gonna kill the heat for now. All right, so we have these chips, these beautiful chips, and they still have some grease on them. And that's great because we want salt to stick to them. So. Grab yourself a pan, or a bowl rather. They're not too hot. <laughs> a little bit of salt, depends on how much you like. I like salty chips. Let's give them a taste. We're good. Yeah, so let's plate things up, shall we? We have our guac. Obviously, we have our margarita right here. Let me get this ugly stuff out of the way. Our guac right here. And you can tell there's, there's a decent amount of cilantro in this. My buddy Sandy would hate it, but... Um, Oh, <laughs> only on live, only when we go live, babe. It went right on the, did, no, it went right on the plate. Okay, probably shouldn't be using a silicone spatula for this. There. Okay, a little bit of guac. Oh, some chips. I like to put the chips in a, on a sheet pan, like so. Let's see, we have questions. Frozen taquito, chef, nice, Rizzy. Come on, man, I know you can do better than that. Uh, let's see, I saw a video by Adam Argusia showing uh, that you just as well could use olive oil for frying, not necessarily using neutral flavored oils. Well, that's, that's cool. Um, the chef that I worked for in, uh, in Florence, Italy, when I was there cooking, they fried with extra virgin olive oil. But I will say that you can burn that oil, the extra virgin you can burn pretty easily, and it's gonna give you not a great taste. Um, so you have to be very careful there. Just uh, the more refined extra virgin olive oil, uh, I think is, is perfectly fine for frying. But uh, it's just not something I use. I, I don't, I always typically go to peanut oil when I fry. Just with the exception of frying corn tortillas, I figured corn oil, why not? I mean. Kind of makes sense, right? But um, extra virgin, I would never deep fry with extra virgin, even though I worked for somebody that did that. I just, I wouldn't do it. Maybe it's because it's in abundance over there and that's just what they use. I don't know. Not something that I would do though. Okay. 
Let's see. Do we have any other questions? Is it possible to bake them instead? Uh, yes. Uh, it, we, that was the question we addressed earlier. What? You yeah, I did. Okay. So yeah, we're good. Um, so we have our guac, we have our chips, we have our margarita. I think we're pretty happy right now. What do you think, babe? Yes. Yes. Uh, if you guys don't have any other questions, I'll maybe give it another minute. If not, we're gonna we're gonna sign off. But if you're not subscribed to my channel and you you know like what you see here, if you've watched some of my other videos and um, you know they impress you, uh, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Hit the bell over here. There's a little bell on my channel. That's a notification bell. It'll let you know anytime I post a new video or go live. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, check out that bar pizza video that I did. Uh, it came out on Sunday. It's a little longer. It's about 16 minutes uh, than my typical videos, but it's pretty thorough. And if you want to make a good bar pizza, it's a, it's a delicacy of the South Shore, something I grew up eating. Um, check that video out. Fantastic pizza. Let's see. Okay. I don't think he burned the oil, but he tried to ta taste test it after it was smoking for 10 minutes. I'm sorry, but I can't. Yeah. I, I don't know what Adam's up to there. Maybe he's into the science thing. I don't know. I've burnt extra virgin olive oil plenty of times and it doesn't taste good. Um, that's all I can say about that. Anyways, uh, I think we're good. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy Cinco de Mayo. We're going to chat on some guac, maybe have another margarita, hang out, relax for a little bit. I guess we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks so much for tuning in. See ya.